The last organ system that we're going to discuss in 223 is the nervous system. And we're going to begin that by looking at the organization of nervous tissue. The nervous system has three overlapping functions. We have the sensory input, which we refer to as afferent. So this is where the gathering of information from various sensory receptors inside and outside of the body will occur. And what they're sensing is essentially any changes that occur, once again, inside and outside of our body. And those changes are referred to as stimuli. Integration is the next function. And this is where we have processing and interpretation of that incoming sensory afferent information. And then from there, it will generate a motor output, which is the third part. And this will cause a response by either activating or suppressing muscles, organs, glands, and tissues. The muscles, organs, glands, and tissues that respond to those commands are referred to as effectors. So, so long as they're carrying out that commands, then that's referred to as the effector. All right, so what we're looking at at the bottom is essentially this general overview of these three overlapping functions. So here is your sensory input, all right, and the integration, this is our brain, obviously, and then from there we generate the motor output. So in this particular case, the effector is skeletal muscle, right? It's receiving that information, it's receiving that command from the brain, and it's going to generate the appropriate output. Now, if you see this plus symbol, then I need you to think stimulation, all right? So this is where it's stimulating the muscles, organs, tissues, glands, the effectors. If you see a negative sign or a minus sign, then I need you to think inhibition or suppression. So this is where it's inhibiting the muscle, organ, tissues, and glands. So this is a diagram that I created that divides the nervous system. I really need you to memorize this diagram because this will serve you well, not only for the rest of the semester, but for next semester as well. So the nervous system is broken into two parts. We have the central nervous system, CNS, which consists of the brain and the spinal cord, all right? So brain, spinal cord, central nervous system. Then we have what's called the peripheral nervous system, PNS for short. So these are all the nervous tissue or neural tissue outside of the brain and the spinal cord. Now these arrows are pointing to the direction in which the flow of information is occurring. So in other words, when we look at the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system, the fact that we have arrows going back and forth, that means the peripheral nervous system is sending information afferently so this arrow right over here is sending information afferently to the brain spinal cord. Then if you see this arrow pointing in this direction, then that's the motor output, all right? So that's the brain spinal cord sending information out. All right, so the peripheral nervous system, once again, is nervous tissue outside of the brain and the spinal cord. So let's first look at this half. So I'll highlight all of this, all right? So we're gonna look at this half right here. This essentially is the input. Once again, follow the direction of the arrow. All right, so the division of the input, that means the afferent sensory division, boils down to where is that information coming from, all right? So where is that information coming from that is sending signals to the central nervous system? All right, so if the information is coming from skin, skeletal muscles, and joints, this one over here, right, right here. So if that information is coming from skin, skeletal muscle, and joints, then that's what's referred to as the somatic sensory, right? Sometimes called somatic afferent. It means the same thing. So remember, afferent equals sensory. So whether you say somatic afferent, somatic sensory, it means the same thing. Now, the neurons, the nerve cells that is afferent, right, that is picking up, that's monitoring the skin, skeletal muscle, and joints is the somatic sensory neurons, right? Somatic sensory neurons. All right, now what if that information is coming from organs, tissues, and muscles? Because obviously not everything's gonna come from skin, skeletal muscle, and joints. So if the information is coming from organs, tissue, and smooth muscle, then that's this division right here, the visceral afferent, the visceral sensory, 
means the same thing once again. All right. So the neurons associated with the visceral sensory or visceral afferent is the visceral sensory neurons. All right. Then we have what's called the special sense organs. So the special sense organs consist of vision, so seeing. It consists of hearing. All right. It consists of balance and equilibrium. It consists of smell and it consists of taste. So that's all part of the special sense organ. Now, obviously, I hope that makes sense that this is sensing, right? So when we're looking at an object, that information is being sent to our brain so we can interpret what exactly we are looking at. So once again, this is sensory afferent. Now, the fact that the arrows are pointing in this direction tells us is that it is sending information to the central nervous system because now the central nervous system is going to take that information, process it, and generate the appropriate output, or at least we hope it does. All right, so once again, take note of the direction of the arrow. That means input. That means, that means it's heading towards the central nervous system. This is why it's sensory. All right, what about the second half? The second half is output. So we're looking at this one over here, all right, output. All right, motor efferent division. So motor equals efferent, and I go back and forth with this. Now, the fact that the arrows are pointing downward means that that information is coming from the central nervous system, and now it's heading towards the effectors. All right, so we have two divisions to the efferent, a.k.a. motor division, output once again. It's just a matter of where that information is being sent to, the effectors, in other words. All right, so let's first begin with what we call the somatic nervous system, the SNS. It's sometimes referred to as the voluntary nervous system. And the reason for that is because the effectors are skeletal muscles. All right, so as far as this division is concerned, the effectors are skeletal muscles. So we've already talked about muscle contraction, skeletal muscle contraction, and we saw that skeletal muscle cannot contract without being told to contract. So in other words, your brain, as you'll see later, is going to tell our skeletal muscles to contract. And that is part of this nervous system, the somatic nervous system. And the neurons are the somatic motor neurons. And in fact, I asked you to memorize that because now we can put the pieces together. All right, so those neurons are somatic motor neurons that is now commanding skeletal muscle, I need you to contract. All right, well, not everything is going to go to skeletal muscle. What about the organs, the tissues, the smooth muscle, and everything else? Well, that's going to be this division of the efferent slash motor division. And that's the autonomic nervous system, the ANS for short, sometimes referred to as the involuntary nervous system. So those neurons are called the visceral motor neurons. So where are they going to? Well, they're going to go everywhere else but skeletal muscle. So what are you thinking here? Well, I need you to think of cardiac muscle tissue. I need you to think of smooth muscle tissue, organs, glands, you name it, as long as it's not skeletal muscle. Now, the ANS is further divided into the sympathetic division and the parasympathetic division, as you see in the bottom right. All right, so the symp sympathetic division is sometimes referred to as the fight or flight. Right? And the parasympathetic is rest and digest. So we're, there's a whole chapter that goes over the ANS. And ladies and gentlemen, this is huge next semester. So really, I need you to memorize this diagram and, and definitely understand what we're doing here because this is all applicable for obviously this class and next semester as well. So the central nervous system, once again, consists of the spinal cord and the brain. And what we find in the spinal cord and brain are nervous tissue, connective tissue, and blood vessels. And the function of the central nervous system is to process, to integrate, and to coordinate. So it's going to receive sensory information from both inside and outside of the body. In other words, internal stimuli and external stimuli. It's going to process, integrate that information upon which it's going to generate the motor command, the output. So that's going to control the activities of their effectors, right? the uh, peripheral organs, so examples of muscle contraction, glandular secretions, for example, and it's involved in higher functions such as intelligence, memory, learning, emotion. So we actually have a chapter that's devoted to the brain and another chapter that's devoted to the spinal cord. 
The peripheral nervous system are nervous tissue outside of the central nervous system, the brain and the spinal cord. So what we refer to these nervous tissue that's outside of the central nervous system as nerves, also called peripheral nerves, and they consist of what we call bundles of axons, which again we'll discuss uh, later on. So along with the nerves, we find connective tissue and blood vessels as well. So we have two types of nerves. So we have what are called cranial nerves and spinal nerves. So cranial nerves are what are attached to the brain, while spinal nerves are what are attached to the spinal cord. So if we look at the cranial nerves, right? So cranial nerves, once again, are attached or associated with the brain. We have 12 of them and they're Roman numerally numbered. So I need you to memorize these 12 cranial nerves along with their numbering system. So if you look at Roman numeral number one, then that's the olfactory, all right? So please memorize these 12 cranial nerves along with the Roman numeral designation. Then we have the spinal nerves. So the spinal nerves are divided into the cervical nerves, or we could also say cervical spinal nerves, C1 to C8. Then we have the thoracic nerves, which we can also refer to as the thoracic spinal nerves, T1 to T12. The lumbar nerves, or lumbar spinal nerves, L1 to L5. The sacral nerves, or the sacral spinal nerves, S1 to S5. And the coxygeal nerve, or we could also say coxygeal spinal nerves, C0. Let's look at C1, all right? So C1, we know that that could mean cervical vertebra C1, the atlas. Well, now we have to be clear because just simply putting C1, do you mean cervical vertebra C1 or do you mean cervical spinal nerve C1? So we need to be clear, right? So up until this point, C1 was automatically understood as the atlas cervical vertebra number one, but now we know that C1 could also mean cervical spinal nerve. So we have to be super clear. We have to be especially clear. So the only exception is C8, right? So let's look at C8. So folks, C8, there is no such thing as cervical vertebra C8. The cervical vertebrae, if you recall, goes from C1 to C7. There is no C8 cervical vertebra. However, there is a C8 cervical spinal nerve. So as far as C8 is concerned, we don't need to be clear because if you see C8, then automatically you need to think it has to be a cervical spinal nerve because there is no cervical vertebra C8. Now, if we look at the thoracic nerves, T1 to T12, then we need to be clear here as well because once again, the th uh, thoracic vertebrae also takes on the same numbering system, T1 to T12. And the same thing can be said for the lumbar spinal nerves, L1 to L5, the sacral spinal nerves, S1 to S5, and the coccygeal spinal nerve, C0. So when we look at the coccygeal nerve, C0, now when we talked about the coccyx with the vertebrae, the terminal end of the vertebrae, or the inferior end of the vertebrae, we numbered it C01 to C03-0. Five. So as far as the coccygeal spinal nerve is concerned, there is just the designation C0. So if we count the number of spinal nerves that we have, we have a total of 31 spinal nerves and 12 cranial nerves. So later on, we'll talk about the cranial nerves and we'll also talk about the spinal nerves. And you'll see that we're going to actually have 31 pairs of spinal nerves.